Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hey, thanks for joining us on Think Tech Hawaii. This is Security Matters Hawaii, and I am Andrew Lanning, your host uh, of this episode. And today we're going to get a little bit into active shooter, but we're going to take a little look at a little different look and talk about the responses. We're going to talk about some of the problems with those types of events and then ways that we can address them or mitigate that and maybe save more lives, which is important to all of us. I am have some great guests here today. Uh, Liam and Fiona are here. Thank you so much for coming. Thank Appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Thanks, Thanks for, for taking time. Us. They were vacationing, but I snagged them to the studio. <laughs> um, uh, so I tell you what, uh, I usually like to find out, since you're security folks and security minded, what keeps you up at night? Okay. That's a good question. Mm. So for me, what keeps me up at night is just not wanting to read another ca catastrophic story mm. in the paper. Aren't we burned out by that already? Yeah, yeah. So we know there's, a, there's many events that are happening around university school campuses and how we can get to the people who need help the quickest and how we can prevent mm. these incidences and crimes happening in the first place constantly trying to tighten that time mm -hmm. to get to those people tr trying to find ways and ensure what we're doing actually does that Helps. so that we yeah yeah shortens the time to respond it so be part of the pro part of the solution and not part of the problem exactly Liam, what about yourself yeah I, I think andrew that um every day we get up we think about Today is going to be the day that we save a life. Yes. That's our goal. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. whether it is the impact from a serious crime such as, you know, a shooting, you know, aggravated assault, mm -hmm. or whether it's a rape or sexual assault. Sure. We want to impact someone's life. So that's what we do every day. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So let's get uh, let's get into sort of what your backgrounds, maybe we'll kind of go into the history of sort of how you maybe got into technology or as much as you want to give mm -hmm. away anyway. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Liam will get it from you. And uh, let's, let's, uh, what, we'll kind of drive up to what got you here today or what got you to Halo SOS. So <clears throat> I have many years working um, in complex solutions, designing and building and in sales complex solutions for um, very large telcos. Okay. So they would be sort of long sort of sales cycles where you try to help them solve a problem that they have and make sure that that solution is a good fit for them. Um, so my background is in sales and marketing. I've also worked with um, entrepreneurs over the years as well, helping them get their marketing message right. Um, that's another part of my background. For me, the, the, this whole solution came up um, when I needed help really quickly, mm. when I needed to get to my phone but couldn't because I needed to keep my eyes on the problem. Mm. So the solution, yeah, how can I call for help when I can't get to my phone? Wow. So um, that's where the, the idea came from. Oh. Um, it was a particularly scary problem. There was um, a situation where I couldn't get out of because I needed to keep my eyes on what was going on. So for me, that's where the, the whole solution began to evolve from. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. So it's driven from experience. I yeah, like right. that. Yeah, 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 definitely. You went to find a solution and you just built one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Liam, what about yourself? What's uh, yeah, give us so a bit I, of your history there? So. I'm the builder, I guess. The, okay. Um, I, I've always worked in mission critical communications. Center. Um, okay. Everything I've done is, I guess the theme of my career has always been about protecting people. So whether mm. that's uh, kids in theme parks from being abducted mm. or uh, prison officers in maximum security facilities or patients and clinical staff in hospitals, mm. it's always been about using technology to deliver effective results to ensure that people stay safe. That's okay. everything we do is about making sure people are safe. Wow, amazing. Well, technology's changed yeah. and keeps changing mm -hmm. very quickly. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Tell me, um, so we heard a little bit about maybe what got Halo SOS started. How did you two decide to embark down the, the path of, of you know, building this solution? I think when we, when, when, when the incident happened to Fiona, um, and that kind of, that, that was the germinate and that was the idea began to, to form. We began to look at environments where we could have an impact, where the, where the, mm. the, the problem was the largest. Um, and as it evolved, um, we realized that campus environments where they're, they're essentially small cities. Some are, yeah, some yeah. are, mm -hmm. some are large, almost large right, cities. Some are, some are bigger than small yeah. cities, sure. They're, and so you have 
this mix of people, but in a very controlled environment. Mm -hmm. So our focus is on solutions where we control that environment to a degree, mm -hmm. to a degree, and implementing technology that assists campus police officers, assists the students, and assists the, the university as a whole. Um, I, I think what we did was when we looked at existing solutions in mm -hmm. the marketplace, we realized that from a practical point of view, the user experience didn't actually work. So, mm -hmm. if, if you if you take the situation where you have um, uh, a girl walking home at night mm -hmm. and she feels under threat, currently she has to get access to her phone, unlock her phone, find the app. It's, it's simply not practical when mm -hmm. you know you're nervous, your hands are shaking. Yeah, if you're trying to stressed, run or something else, oh, sure, exactly. Or, exactly. Sure. So we defined that user experience by making it simple as possible. So now. People no need to, they don't even need access to their phone. They just mm -hmm. say a pre-recorded keyword mm -hmm. that's unique to them and will generate alerts to campus police. And that launches it and it gives their location and mm -hmm. obviously that's a duress signal. Mm -hmm. Correct. So so I guess that was the first part. The the first part we did was we changed that user interface mm -hmm. to make it more practical, more useful. The the second bit that we kind of revolutionized was um, helping the campus police, it's all right to generate an alert, mm -hmm. but campus police need to know exactly where, exactly you, are. where you are. Exactly where you are. To respond quickly, yeah. is, yes, they must. And if you keep moving, then, because obviously you're running from someone perhaps mm -hmm. or something, right. so where you sent the alarm may not be where you still are. Correct. Well, the key thing is to get out of the way, get mm -hmm. out of the zone, get out of the situation. So moving away from whatever's happening is, is really, really important. And finding the right way mm -hmm. out of that situation um, is really key as well. So in a situation where there's many people being affected, mm -hmm. we can have a tremendous impact on how to get them out of the red zone, the mm -hmm. hot zone, what's going on at the time. So we can identify when many, many people are in trouble. Mm -hmm. We. Um, have a solution that identifies where, where that's happening because many people have raised an alarm and we then allow them to find an egress or an escape route out of that zone. And we also, by, by doing that, we also show others on campus. So you might have 30,000 people on campus mm. or more not to go into that zone. So that's, sure. that's the danger zone. We, we don't want you going there. We want to keep you safe. So between the two, the two variances, between the single person requiring help, mm -hmm. which we think about whether it's indoors or outdoors, we can find them. Um, so indoors, we can identify what floor they're on or what room they're in, potentially. Mm. Awesome. Depending on the granularity that we go into. And then outdoors as well. So somebody far away from sec the security um, control, mm -hmm. um, we can then launch a drone to identify if they need help, what kind of help they need, mm. what kind of situation they're in, we provide that advanced intelligence back to the That's security. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, you, you yeah. often hear that uh, people are blind, right? So that mm -hmm. your, your first responders are showing up they and the information that they were even sent with, maybe it's maybe there's a little bit of verbal stuff being told yeah. to them. We mm -hmm. heard people said there were shots on the third floor. It's so or confusing. People said, yeah. you know, something, but they still don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that, that, that ability to get some situational awareness mm -hmm. for what's mm -hmm. truly happening mm -hmm. on the site and then even knowing how many people am I looking for mm -hmm. makes mm -hmm. sense to me. Mm -hmm. How many people, do I need to get 100 people down the stairwell or do I have three mm -hmm. people that could jump out of a window or, or something? I don't know, but mm -hmm. knowing how many people I'm trying to help mm -hmm. is also, I think, important. And I, mm -hmm. One of the things I think is important for us, Andrew, is to realize that first responders aren't necessarily the guys with the uniform on and the badge on the shoulder. Oh, for sure. It's, it's the individuals. It's yeah. the individuals who are there at that moment in time. And we need to give them relevant information to that situation that has a context. I, mm. I think the difficulty at the moment in, in these mass um, uh, killers or these uh, active killer situations mm -hmm. is that the information that's driven out to people is, first, it's not timely. It's usually an SMS and it takes mm -hmm. a long time. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's also no context around it. It says mm -hmm. things like shooter on campus. Yeah, that's that's you know great. You where eight thousand acres? Where? First thing, that's the first thing I'm thinking. Yeah. Where? Where? And, and am I even and on the even, campus? Where yeah. am I? Like, and in even relation hearing, to it, right? Hearing gunshots, you just don't know where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we yeah. see that the reports, and I've, um, I guess I don't know if you call it fortunately or unfortunately, been able to talk with folks who were like mm -hmm. in the rooms 
um, mm -hmm. and, and had been under fire at, at some of these events. Mm -hmm. And they, when the gunfire first began, they mm -hmm. don't perceive it as gunfire. That it's just not what it's they're expecting to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So they don't know what's occurring, mm -hmm. and that's the clock's ticking. Yeah. You know, yep. while they're, you know. And that clock ticking is really, really important for us. So uh, identifying the moment something happens and then getting people to that site as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. So squeezing down and re reducing the time to respond. Mm -hmm. Also, in that golden hour, in that time it takes to get to somebody, that golden hour is where we can have an impact on so many people who actually bleed out or go into shock. Mm -hmm. We can't find them, we don't know where they are. Mm -hmm. So if we can identify where they are in the building, we can get to them a lot wow. quicker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are they able to give feedback as well? Could they, could they, will they, is it bad direction in other words, so you could see them? Are they able to say, I have been shot, so you could maybe know, or is it, you see the ones moving and the ones that aren't probably got shot, or what, what are we, what's the, what's the future for that look like? From, mm -hmm. from, the, from the user perspective, um, we, we have multiple ways of doing that. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. We open up voice channels so oh, you can talk awesome. back. Okay. Um, but in certain situations, you may not want to yeah, make any noise. You want to be silent. You sure. to be silent. You're, you're so we have, you know, push button approaches if you need to do that as well. Mm -hmm. From the um, uh, campus police point of view and the responder point of view, they are seeing messages saying, I'm okay. That disappears from the screen, mm -hmm. and we now focus on the ones who haven't, haven't responded. responded. So we know mm -hmm. where to focus where our attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we know awesome. where to focus. And can could I get more intel? Could I could I perhaps open a voice a, a channel a sound a listening channel? To me, Correct. that could be super valuable, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, because mm -hmm. I could hear the person barking mm -hmm. or screaming yep. or you know ranting and ranting, and then it gives me more location more or information. more information about that location. Yep. If I'm in shouting distance of that phone, I'm pretty close by, mm -hmm. or, yeah. or, or whatever it may be. So, yeah, absolutely. Interesting. Uh, absolutely, interesting. yeah. I mean, your voice is really the most powerful weapon you have. Mm -hmm. it, it really is. Um, so using that to call for help, to generate awareness, to provide intel, is, is vital to positive outcomes on, on mm -hmm. these events. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and shortening that time frame. So the you know, a lot of times these things are over, over so quickly, so quickly, and there's been a lot of damage that happened very quickly. So the speed of response to me is also very Again, appealing feature. That immediacy, quite often, there's not a lot we can do about that. But it's the after effect. Mm -hmm. the The immediacy of it happens. We need to know about it as soon as possible. But it's what could continue to happen. Mm -hmm. Who could go into shock? Who could bleed out? Who can be found by that? shooter or shooters on campus mm -hmm. um, as quickly as possible, yeah. And the other thing I like about this particular solution is it doesn't just address like the large incident, it addresses the singular incident, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's often overlooked because there's probably a lot more of that there's one a type week. of activity, there's you know, one, that, a, one shooter a week, yeah. that someone needs help with, mm -hmm. right? Instead of like like a potential rape or a potential and assault or something. You know, I mean, there's, yeah, there's a lot of that that goes even unreported, right? We don't even know. And maybe if people had the, op the opportunity to call it in at the time that they feel threatened, mm -hmm. that does I bring, think we get better data that, on, on how much of that's really going on as well. Absolutely, and that brings us nicely into um, a couple of other features that we have added into the solution, and one of them is reporting safe harbor reporting. For, so mm -hmm. for somebody who has um, been threatened in the past or who has mm -hmm. suffered an assault and they don't know where to go or they don't feel comfortable about reporting, we do allow them to report that in a safe harbor situation and wow. in it, until they are ready to report it. But also prior to that even happening, we have another feature that allows them to report something that is not happening necessarily to them or is maybe going to happen in the future. So they can call out something mm. that they're, they're you know, uh, concerned about or sure. um, want somebody in authority to take control over. Mm -hmm. So if they see a problem, they mm -hmm. say it and they, they allow that then to be registered into the system. In the safe harbor reporting for anybody who has been assaulted, bullied, attacked, whatever the situation is for them that they feel vulnerable to or have suffered, once they report it, we then use analytics to tie other people into that oh, same awesome. okay. situation. So if there's any commonalities, we will connect them and you know allow them to take it further if that's what they want to do. Perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's um, tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a short break. We're talking with the founders of Halo SOS. We'll be back in about one minute. Thank you. 
Good afternoon. My name is Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green, a program on Think Tech Hawaii. We show at 3 o'clock in the afternoon every other Monday. My guests are specialists both from here and the mainland on energy efficiency, which means you do more for less electricity and you're generally safer and more comfortable while you're keeping dollars in your pocket. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Gabrieli. I'm the host for Young Talents Making Way here on FinTech Hawaii. We talk every Tuesday at 11 a.m. about things that matter to tech, matter to science, uh, to the people of Hawaii with some extraordinary guests. The students uh, of our schools who are participating in science fair. So Young Talents Making Way every Tuesday at 11 a.m. only on FinTech Hawaii. Mahalo. Hey, welcome back to this episode of Security Matters Hawaii. I'm Andrew, the security guy. We're here on the Think Tech Hawaii studios with Fiona and Liam from Halo SOS, and we are talking about mitigating some of the problems for, for not only active shooter events, but for crime itself in general. How do we get help to somebody quicker, and how do we do it almost hands-free? You know, a way that, that they can get a response to you when they may be struggling with something, can't get to their phone. So voice activated uh, type of technology that l gives your location out, lets people know you're, you need help. And so we were talking a little bit about also a safe harbor feature that you mm -hmm. built in mm -hmm. that allows people to report up an incident that, mm -hmm. you know, they think could occur or, or may be occurring or they don't, they don't really want to go to the authorities yet, they're not sure, but it lets us mm -hmm. start collecting data about some of these perhaps bad guys or bullies or whatever yeah. certain certain people do bad things to people and we know it's sometimes a, a few bad guys are doing a lot of bad stuff mm -hmm. it's not like everybody's causing trouble mm -hmm. so this is an interesting feature let's uh, let's delve into that a little bit more what's the what do you think the the long term development of something like that is build a database of uh, bad boys i'm thinking yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at least the campus scoundrel you know yeah. i don't know what you call him so look i i think it's a it's um a very interesting point under the clery act you see colleges having to report um the various crimes and truthfully truthfully um the vast majority of these crimes are committed by um, individuals, mm -hmm. um, it's not the whole campus. Sure. So it is one or two yeah. individuals, one on one. the bad apple, who's given the whole campus a bad name. The difficulty is, particularly in um, sexual assaults, people may feel, find it very difficult to report that incident yeah. uh, for, for any myriad of reasons. Sure. It's, it's a very they difficult They feel responsible, thing. they feel mm -hmm. like they, yeah. you know, and, they, and they're, bu or they're bullied or threatened or. or don't be a tattletale. There's a lot of stuff like yeah, that, right? Yeah. Sure, or, understood. Or, or, or you know, the, those type of you know personal issues that people can't feel they can respond. To. So what we built is we built a very intelligent database, essentially, right? And it runs artificial intelligence in the background. And as you report the crime to the safe harbor element, so it's not coming to campus police. It's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's sitting in a repository. Within that repository, we capture certain details. Mm -hmm. So for instance, um, one girl might report a crime that says, Liam Darling attacked me Friday night. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have to do anything else with it. Mm -hmm. She puts it in there. A couple of weeks later, another girl may report, this guy, Liam Darling, attacked me on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. What actually happens then is, the, the algorithms are looking for matches, and mm -hmm. they see this name that says, Liam Darling, Liam Darling, mm -hmm. and then we revert back to both Mm -hmm. people who uh, reported the crime and flag it to them that you're not alone. So mm. if you think of the Harvey Weinstein scenario, sure. the reason he got away with that for so long was because nobody knew, nobody that was That he was talking. doing it to everybody. Exactly. And it took what a, a small group of women to come together and put it together that this is what was happening to them in the past. Yeah, he's like a serial criminal, this guy. Yeah. yeah. And, it's and exactly a lot of these the guys are. Campus. They yeah. are, and they're expert at it. And mm -hmm. they're, they're expert at hiding, and mm -hmm. they're expert at not being found because mm -hmm. of their, the techniques and the strategies that they use. So I like the idea of, of giving it back to the people that first reported it and mm -hmm. letting them talk about their experience. Because mm -hmm. it, it could be the guy just couldn't hardly get him out of the room. Or, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. what was it was odd? When you say no means no, right, mm -hmm. or whatever you're taught. And mm -hmm. once I said no, when you don't leave the room, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe, I, maybe people need to know about that, mm -hmm. especially yeah. if that's 
yeah. becoming a persistent behavior. So this yeah. this person who's maybe not even hurting anyone yet, he's just not getting the message very clearly. Mm -hmm. Maybe he yeah. needs a little counseling mm -hmm. on what no means, yep. just mm -hmm. for example. Yep. So I see a lot of outcomes from, yep. it's kind of a sort of pre, perhaps pre, but, Bad event. Major not, event. Not that people don't feel violated just by Absolutely. telling, please yeah. leave me alone, yeah. I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. That's not what I intended yeah. or whatever. Like, that should be enough. But when it's not and someone's not getting it, you know, maybe this thing gets a and gets it becomes, to a counselor sooner and stops something really bad from happening it to It becomes someone. preventative. Yeah. yeah. If that's out on campus and everybody knows it's available and everybody's using it, mm -hmm. it acts as a deterrent in the first and place. You know, the U.S. has released some funding for um, autonomous reporting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know they just put this in the bill. Now, what I don't know is if it got passed, but I know it came out mm -hmm. in the budget to give to state department of educations to mm -hmm. implement something similar mm -hmm. so some mm -hmm. autonomous mm -hmm. reporting because i guess they don't want to even be known but i like you know yours if i've opted in obviously for the service and mm -hmm. i've used the safe harbor service when i get some mm -hmm. information back that's mm -hmm. still protected between the service and myself mm -hmm. correct mm -hmm. so it would seem to me that that type of autonomy it, it, it must have there must be enough science that there's value there that people are more willing to report if there's a little bit of autonomy you're not always ready to go that next yeah. step yeah interesting interesting mm -hmm. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the drones. So we have some, we have different rules here in the U.S. for drones, which is, I think, problematic for this type of response thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. But obviously where, where you're going with that to bring situational awareness mm -hmm. to, to, you know, you're giving the geospatial information, mm -hmm. I'm guessing, to the drone. And mm -hmm. It's going there on site. Is this... Uh, are some stuff you already tested and, and, mm -hmm. and, and are playing with. Yeah, awesome. it's it, really like, powerful. The, the, the drones, are, and everybody loves the drones. Well, of course, yeah, of course. yeah we got to talk about <laughs> drones. Who, who doesn't love the drones? Um, but they do serve a very serious purpose yes. here, right? Yeah. Um, okay, on any event, whether it is an assault, aggravated, or whether it is a shooter, um, your first responders are the people on the ground. Mm -hmm. So the next people that come are campus police or, or emergency personnel. But you do not want them stepping into something unknown. Sure. You simply don't want to do right. that. Right. Well, so you say you never send a, your neighbor to over to stop the robber in your house mm -hmm. who has a gun. Mm -hmm. right. exactly. you call, Can you see what's going on? And yeah. you get shot, right? So, so you, sure. you, you've got to protect your people because mm -hmm. if you don't protect the professional first responders, mm -hmm. they aren't going to be able to provide the necessary service to help right. the people there. Mm -hmm. So you've got to protect them and you've got to provide them um, information. And the way we do that is the, the drone actually autonomously flies to the event. Awesome. So mm -hmm. if it's outdoors, it flies to GPS coordinates, right? Mm -hmm. If it's indoors, what it actually does, it performs a perimeter mm -hmm. around the building, mm -hmm. watching the, the exit. Mm -hmm. We have high definition cameras on that stream back to campus police on their devices mm -hmm. en route to the incident. That's so awesome. the officer is not walking into something that he shouldn't be walking into. Mm -hmm. We need to give as much information as possible to the first responders who are mm -hmm. in the event mm -hmm. and the professional first responders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and especially the you know law enforcement always talks about so they don't mm -hmm. have the information. They're coming in, the guys going that way. So yeah. when you got that drone, now me, I want you to, I want you to shoot him with that green <laughs> ink. You know, I want him I marked know. so we see him for a week in case yeah. he does happen to run in the woods and get yeah. away. Yeah. But I know we're probably a little little further away from well, that. You know, we love, I think it turns, we love those blue. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, my yeah, yeah. my navy yeah. training says let's weaponize yeah. that thing. But I'm sure it's you know I'm sure there's more to it than that. Yeah. Yeah. But I like I like the. I think that it's powerful just if he could even follow them as they egress. Someone's mm -hmm. running away, and now I've got eyes on that We've person getting away. You know what I mean? And that's, that's I mean, it's super powerful. Why the, the first responders can still go in and handle what's happened. Mm -hmm. Now we've got a responding force that can go run yeah. this guy. See, yeah. he may go to another building and hurt other people yeah. or, or wherever, he, you know, we don't know. Yeah. And so. again, when we have eyes on him, Andrew, right, we can provide intel to individuals within that red zone mm -hmm. to egress that area. Mm -hmm. so, that's awesome. Keeping keeping a focus on them is really really important. Mm -hmm. So so it's about advanced intel, really. I hope my friends at University of Hawaii are watching us today, Gary, <laughs> out there. So we'll uh, we'll we'll have to. Um, so you're you're you've got a rollout down in uh, on the campus in Australia. I know you're trying to get also in the U.S. You're talking yeah. to folks here. So yeah. what's uh, what's uh, what's going on with that? And we're at campus down safety there? in in July. Oh in yeah, sure. Virginia. Awesome. Yeah, so, Rab, Robin Hattersley has yeah. a huge event up there, so that'll be really good. So I'm mm -hmm. looking forward to meeting some people there. Um, yeah, we have, we're based in Australia at the moment currently. Uh, we have a rollout happening in Melbourne with okay. the university there, um, which is, which will be done, I think, at the Yeah, I, I, I think, I think that we, we should be done by September. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, it's a very interesting campus. It's a uh, urban campus, um, which means mm. the drone doesn't really have a place there sure. because of its compact nature. 
Um, but it is a series of large indoor multi-story space. And they okay. want a high level of granularity into that building. Good. Yeah. yeah, which means that our technology is pretty much the only technology that can give you a room level position of a person in a duress um, situation. That's amazing. Because you, you need a lot of towers, basically, for the, the to, to know the exact location of the phone. You sell towers because yeah, you're using so, the, the yeah. cellular signal. Yeah, so, so, well, and, out, and try some GPS as well. Yeah, so GPS outdoors. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we use a very simple technology, Bluetooth positioning oh, okay, indoors. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Right, so mm -hmm. it's a very simple. I mean, the install is really good. Mm -hmm. But the power of that technology um, to deliver accurate, granular results is, is just amazing. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. So that'll be exciting. Will you be able to talk about that more when you're up uh, with the campus safety folks in Virginia? Absolutely. They'll be yeah. they'll be wanting yeah. to see that. And then, of course, here in the Security Matters Hawaii studio, <laughs> we're going to want to get an update. So we'll uh, mm -hmm. we do some remote. So maybe we can do oh, a yeah, little uh, remote broadcast at some yeah. point, maybe yeah. in the Q4 or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you folks have uh, have kind of got that thing done down there, it's it's. Um, it's it's not lost on me that you've you've put a lot of effort into minimizing response time mm -hmm. because people really need help and everybody sees the headlines for all the big stuff the mm -hmm. terrible stuff that mm -hmm. happens but people don't often think about the smaller things it's that actually got this started basis. you know that yeah. response like I I don't have time to pick up my phone and open an app I just need to say the word mm -hmm. and I got help on the way I had right. my phone in my hand. Mm -hmm. I could not take my eyes off. Yeah, I couldn't take it off to, to no. find the sure. No. That makes total sense yeah. to me. Mm -hmm. So that's brilliant. Is and there's a you know, vo it's interesting how voice has become this new interface, right? So everyone's voice talking. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I know we had some. I think it was it's not serious Alexa or somebody sent someone's voice oh, in the wrong Alexa. way. So right, yeah. we need some controls yeah. on yeah, that, yeah, obviously, yeah. and we've yeah. talked about those things. But yeah. I mean, in an emergency situation, of, of all the things. Being able to use your voice, as you said, is very mm -hmm. powerful, and mm -hmm. that's a, an interesting driver that mm -hmm. I think will catch on mm -hmm. um, because it, you know, the phone's listening, mm -hmm. the phone can hear, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so if I can ask for help and help comes, that's that's mm -hmm. like almost mm -hmm. from the heavens. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, where Halo SOS came from? Is that exactly. like your angel? I don't know. It's, we've got a few minutes. We or so do left. like let's, the let's, idea let's. of watching over. And again, when somebody somebody actually says a key phrase to activate, yes, like you would say, "Hey Google." So you say a key phrase. It opens up the device. It's not necessarily listening all the time. So maybe that's a, a, a oh yeah, good point. Thing sure, yeah, thank you. Um, I don't record. But Invoke as the product and Halo SOS as the business, definitely it's about calling in. It's about watching over you. So there is that, yeah. Great. We want to well, watch you. over people. Thank you so yeah. much. Thanks for coming in today. No, thanks. Um, I'm out next week. I'm going to be off island, so there will not be an episode. But thanks for joining us today in the Think Tech studio with Liam and Fiona. And uh, we hope to hear more about Halo SOS we in the future. We look forward to being back. Aloha. Thank you so Aloha. much. <laughs> thanks, everybody.